Rachel Smith is a comics creator whose books include Wired Up Wrong, Stand in Your Power, The Rabbit, and the soon-to-be-released Quarantine Comics. A lot of her work focuses on her struggles with mental health. She's also worked on Doctor Who, the 10th Doctor series for Titan. And she's here with us today, ready to talk about comics. How are you, Rachel? Hello, Eva. I'm I'm very well. So you wrote the most just beautiful and endearing comic book I think I've read in a while. And um, would you, would you mind talking on that for for a little bit, telling us what it's about and where it came from? I'd love to. So I have a new book out on the 13th of March. Thirteenth uh, oh, of March. Thirteenth of May. <laughs> called Quarantine Comics. And it's just about my, it's kind of my memoirs of, of lockdown. And mainly the kind of big story arc is me being trapped away from my, my partner, my boyfriend, uh, but also about the kind of humdrum day-to-day -day life that this very strange, <laughs> strange past year has put us into. So yeah, there's a lot of comics about just me <laughs> talking to my cat and me annoying my housemate. And it, it, yeah, I suppose it was it was kind of me trying to make that time that we're, that we're still kind of in, um, in a way, uh, kind of human. So finding those tiny moments of humanity and those tiny moments of humor and and just silliness but sometimes those moments of quite bitter sweet you know pain and and yeah just kind of putting the humanity on on the whole pandemic um episode i suppose uh but they're all just kind of four panel comics like a like a sort of newspaper strip type length and yeah this book is a collection of the first 200 of those so yeah it sounds like you liked it so that's good <laughs> I, I really did, and uh, you know there there were parts of it that that, that just sort of really spoke to me, like uh, just sort of the way the uh, this is it a black dog that just sort of sits over her head yeah. and, and tells her negative <laughs> things. So I have Barky, who is a, a big black dog. I like I, I started drawing him as a dog. He's now turned into this weird rabbit sort of creature he's just just this weird creature uh but yeah he's black it, it comes from i think i think it was churchill that first uh, coined the phrase my, my black dog as in depression that follows you around um so yeah I, I drew this black dog to represent that um and as my depression and and pessimism and just he tells me to do silly things and, and bad things and and then i have friendly who is a white dog and she tells me to do do good things and, and is my is a representation of my kind of optimism and common sense and and things like that so i play with the the two of those quite a lot in the comics though so that as a kind of visual metaphor for for those two things and they 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 both get bigger and smaller depending on how i'm feeling that day so i found i found that quite a a, a useful way of visually talking about about my mood <laughs> like that that makes a ton of sense so mm -hmm. I, I i really like it uh and the other the other character that well there's a couple of other characters in the book but uh the other one i find really endearing is the cat like there was one comic in there where uh, you're in bed and you just say you know what i don't want to get up today i want the world to stop and the cat just lays down and says yeah that's a great idea let's do that <laughs> yeah rufus is rufus my cat is has been a rock um <laughs> throughout this whole thing yeah i love him very much <laughs> he's been he's a he yeah he's a big character in in the comics <laughs> and i think a lot of people can relate to that as well like you know we're all stuck in our houses now with with our pets and and although rufus is an outdoor cat a lot of our pets are, have you know been in uh quarantine for a long time like they a lot of 
people have indoor pets that just don't leave the house. And I think they've taught us a lot in this in this past year. Just like, hey, just be happy with what you have. Like, I don't know. And Rufus taught me a lot <laughs> this year, which is very nice of him. I like the way the book is primarily in black and white. Uh, but every so often you'll do like a whole page that is it's mm. just vivid and in color yeah i think i so when i first started doing these quarantine comics i never thought they'd go in a book i just thought it would be something to keep me busy but they are good the, the, the those color pictures that you're talking about are going in the book and i'm really happy about that i i i um golly how do i explain it i guess the color pictures I think I did just to explain how weird time was like the, the black and white comics, they're very sort of dense and very, and a lot of the time very comical, but there's a lot of dialogue in them and a lot of, you know, me trying to explain how I'm feeling and, and stuff like that. And then the color pictures kind of, I, I tried to get across the fact that there were these very quiet moments in the past year, these very reflective, very contemplative moments. You know, there were a lot of walks, for example, that I did on my own and 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 maybe with one other friend where we were just silent. And and I guess those those big colour pages are kind of meant to be kind of a pause in the book where we remember those those moments when we were just quiet for a moment and 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 remembered what it was to be like in in nature or even just to sit in our gardens and or even just to sit out outside our front door for a second and yeah i guess i was trying to get that across in in those big big uh, big full page spreads and there was one where you used color for uh, dramatic impact and humor uh, which I thought was funny. And that was the one where, uh, you know, you've got this rainbow shirt and this polka dotted pants. Oh, and, uh, yes. <laughs> it was great. Yeah. Am, I, am I giving away too much? I can shut up. If no, no, that's absolutely fine. No, you're quite right. There, is a, there are a couple of comics where I have just colored in a little bit of them just because the joke wouldn't have landed without the color. <laughs> so, yeah, I think there's that one and there's one with um, some dogs. And there are, <laughs> this lady has three like Labradors and one was like a, a, a lemony color and one was a beige color and one was a brown color. And I joke that the, this, this lady must have liked this dog so much that she, she got one in every color. And yeah, that joke wouldn't have quite landed <laughs> if I hadn't have colored in the, the, uh, the strip. But yeah, my, luckily my, my publishers have been very kind and, and have let me just have color now and again in the, in the book. So that's been very, very nice. <laughs> I feel like just given the subject matter of it, that the, just doing most of the book in black and white was a creative choice. It was a, a bold statement that, you know, this is, this is this world. Am I misinterpreting that? Um, no, you're not misinterpreting it. it. It was mostly so that I could get them out quickly, though, if I'm perfectly honest. I had a lot of feelings <laughs> about, about quarantine and making comics about my feelings is how I make sense of the world, really. And so, yeah, they're, they're kind of mostly black and white just because of speed, really. And um, yeah, I had I had a lot to say and colouring in is takes a lot of time. <laughs> so, yeah, it was mainly me being lazy, <laughs> if I'm honest. <laughs> I suppose the, the time that I would have spent colouring would have been one less comic. Do you know what I mean? Just because it was oh, sure. so timely. It was so timely and I wanted to get them out there and I wanted to, because a lot of people, you know, after the first 20 or so, a lot of people were already messaging me saying, oh, this really helps. You, you know, I'm, I'm really enjoying this. It's making me feel less alone. So then I kind of ramped it up a little bit and, and just started making them faster. And yeah. I thought that was the, the getting them out there was was more important than making them look really really beautiful. But then again, yeah, every every ten or so, I tried to make this big beautiful splash page, like like you've mentioned. So that was kind of my oh, what's the word? 
that was my compromise um, there. <laughs> I, I made every every ten or so very very beautiful, but the others I kept black and white and and quite frantic. <laughs> I love it. I, I also like the roommate character an awful lot. He's just he's charming. You you like who? Sorry. There, you've got this uh, roommate named Ian, I think. Oh yes, the, uh, Ian. Ian. He's very, very charming. Yes, he was. He was also a rock throughout the the pandemic. He was great. Yeah, he'll, <laughs> people will will be able to meet him in the book as well. <laughs> but yeah, he was great. And yeah, we, and I'm sure this was the same for a lot of people. We were kind of in each other's pockets for a year, and but you know, yeah, we we kind of we stayed very friendly and we stayed, yeah, very. We kept each other going, and that was really nice. It, it, it could have very easily gone the other way. <laughs> like, um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure I'm, I'm very annoying to live with. I think but <laughs> I managed not to, to to piss him off so much that he he, uh, he told me to go away. But yeah. <laughs> so why create a comic? Uh, why not write a book or something else? What is it about comics that is the medium? this story well i've always loved drawing i've always drawn ever since i was old enough to hold a, a pencil i've drawn and ever since i was old enough to string a sentence together i've written and you know way before com quarantine comics was a thing i i've always i found comics and found that to be my medium because it's a perfect marriage of writing and drawing. I love I love how my comics wouldn't make sense without the writing or the drawing. I really like that. I like how they have to hold hands with each other and uh, help each other tell tell someone something. But I also think for this specific project, it's just, I think if someone's met with a wall of text right now, it's kind of off-putting. Whereas if you're met with a with a comic and it's like, hey, this is just four panels. Do you wanna do you wanna maybe read this? Then maybe people are more eager to be like, oh yeah, I can manage that right now. That's fine. I just think, yeah, we're all operating at this at maybe twenty percent right now. At least I am. I feel like I am anyway. And yeah, I think a, a comic is a very easy thing to digest right now. Do, does that make sense? I don't know. Oh, it makes great sense. Okay. <laughs> What's your earliest memory of, of comics? Oh gosh, I think I was walking home from primary school with my dad and he had bought me the first Sonic the Comic. I don't know if you had that in the, in the US, but it was Sonic the Hedgehog in a comic and I loved Sonic the Hedgehog so much. I loved video games when I was, when I was a kid. And yeah, that was my first comic i think i knew about sort of uh newspaper comics like like uh, peanuts and stuff like that but this was the first kind of thing that i was given that was just a comic it was all all just a comic and it was i loved it so much and i remember lying on my parents living room floor and drawing the pictures out into my sketchbook but yeah and so then i i i just loved i loved comics for a couple of years and then i went off them a little bit when I went to college and university, I think I sort of fell into that trap of thinking they were just superheroes. And arguably Sonic is a superhero, so I guess, you know, that gave room there as well. But um, it wasn't till Scott Pilgrim came out, I think I was 22 then, or in my early 20s at least, and then the penny dropped and I was just like, oh, comics can be about anything. What am I thinking? And then I, I just, yeah, I just inhaled <laughs> comics from then. Yeah, I'd go into to bookstores and buy all the comics and, and you know, f figured out where my local comic stores were. And, 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 yeah, then I've never looked back. And, yeah, that just, it just really inspired me to write comics about kind of slice of life stuff 
because even you know my my non I do make up stories they're not all about me and my cat and my boyfriend I do make stories up as well but I think they're all kind of arguably slice of life although some some of them have fantastical elements in them they are all based on very very down to earth characters and um that's what I find really interesting I guess so yeah <laughs> You mentioned that you enjoy comics because it's sort of the the marriage of writing and artwork and how they just sort of combine and melt in a way that makes them both make sense at the same time. Mm. But where does your creativity come from? Where do you find your your place of emotional zen when you're creating? Oh, golly. Um, that's a very good question. I, I always start with characters. Like if I if I sit down and think, right, I'm going to write a, a, a novel tonight. I'm going to write a graphic novel. It's going to be great. Let's start with the characters. I will always start with the characters. But even if I'm like on the phone with and having a boring phone conversation with uh, Sky or whatever, and they want to renew my subscription, I'll, I'll still be doodling characters. It's always characters. And I will fall in love with them very easily. And, and then I will just start asking questions about them. I will literally ask them questions like, who are you? Like, wh where do you live? What, if you were stuck in, an, in a lift with this person, what would you do? How would you react? And, and I just build them up little by little. And um, yeah, the, it's, <laughs> yeah my, my stuff, if you've read any, any of my stories, they are already very, very character driven. And yeah, I guess that's my, my creative happy place, is building people. Even if the people aren't people, even if I'm building a, a rabbit or, or something like that, they're, they're, they're still people. They're, they're, they still have wants and needs. And yeah, that's a big one for me. I'm usually like, what do you want? But what do you actually need? Like, where's this story going to go? Are you going to get what you want as well as what you need? Or like, is that going to be something different? And, yeah, I, I, and usually by this point, I've, I've really, really annoyed the Sky person who's wanting to renew my subscription, and I'm not listening to them anymore. <laughs> I've just started, I've just started thinking about this rabbit that wants, <laughs> wants an emerald, but actually needs to find a family. And I'm like, yeah, but this is, <laughs> this is more important than, than what you're talking about. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, characters, characters, I think is the short, <laughs> the short answer to your question. How do characters find their voice when you write? Is it sort of a gradual process or does it just all sort of come out fully formed? It's very, very gradual. Their voice, like their actual voice, like I hear in my head, do you mean? Or Yeah, yeah. And uh, what differentiates one character from, uh, from another? Yeah. I think it's really important that characters have different voices in both in my head and on the page. One thing I like doing is if I have a very rough script, because I always, I always script my stories out before I start drawing, I always cover up the names and I look at how they're talking and see if I can differentiate between the characters. Because if they're all talking with the same voice, as you say, then that's that's not good enough. You should be able to to tell who's talking, even if it's, even when it's just written down on, on the page in, in, you know, words with no pictures. So yeah, I, I, I often do that. Gosh, I just, I, I just think it, it adds so much character to the, to the speaker. If, if they have little things that they do with their, their speech, like if they miss off ends or, uh, or just if you, yeah, if you put an accent across or things like that, I think that can be really endearing. And just you know ways of ways of putting things like characters will will use their words differently. I think it's it's very easy. It would be very easy for me to just use my own voice for all my characters and put things how I would say them. But yeah, and it, my characters wouldn't talk like me. And I think that's maybe one of the hardest things as a writer to get across: ma making your characters speak not like you. But it's also one of the the most rewarding things when, um, yeah, when you do put that piece of paper in front of their names and you're like, oh yeah, that's, that's Kathy and that's Eleanor and that's Craig and, and you can just tell. And yeah, it's, it's really nice. It's very, very important that each character has, 
has their own voice that isn't just the, the writers. <laughs> That's neat. I, I always love talking to writers because uh, everybody has a completely different perspective on, on their process mm. and how it all works, you know? Mm, yeah. It's not out yet, but there's a book coming called Good Game Well Played, which is being published by Mad Cave and illustrated by Catherine Lobo, who is an um, amazing artist. I'm so excited to, to see how the book turns out. But yeah, she, so I wrote it and, and she's drawing it. And when I wrote the script, I actually got, this is pre-corona times, please. <laughs> please remember this is pre-corona. We, <laughs> we didn't know what was going to happen. But yeah, I had like nine people around to my house to and I, I printed them out scripts of the of the comic and I just got them all to read it out. And that was really useful to see whether or not the different voices were being used because people yeah. Um just hearing it like that was so useful. So there's a tip for fellow writers if you if you're not quite sure if your script is working. Obviously you'll have to do it over Zoom right now, but <laughs> yeah. Right on. <laughs> so what inspires you? Oh, gosh. Everything, I guess. I mean, I, it, that's a, a hard question. Certainly for quarantine comics, it's, <laughs> it's easy to see what inspired me, I guess. My, uh, uh, if we're going to talk about The Rabbit, which I've, I've, I've um, alluded to a few times, my book, The Rabbit, with Avery Hill Publishing, I guess my upbringing inspired that a little bit. Not that I met a giant rabbit who wanted to wear, wear uh, Kanye shades and a feather boa, but, but you know, the bit, bits in The Rabbit did, uh, you know, be, being bullied and not feeling like I, I fit in. And in fact, yeah, you could say that about artificial flowers as well, not fitting in and wanting to be a part of the art world and not really seeing a way in there. And I guess the, the idea of finding your place in the world inspires a lot of my writing. I haven't seen all of it yet, but um, well, what quality that I am really enjoying about the, uh, the quarantine book is just how honest and human it is. Thank you. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> I am very honest. <laughs> I give a lot of myself <laughs> to to the book, but yeah, that was kind of it, it, it. And that's not me being kind of generous or anything. Although a few people did say that it was, uh, which is very nice of them. But it was more cathartic for me, really, and cathartic for me to put that out there, and then for people to come back saying like, "Hey, I feel this too. You're not." you're not on your own. Don't worry. <laughs> you know, that was quite, quite, quite nice for, for me to hear at that, at that point. Cause yeah, I just started doing the, the quarantine comics to give myself a reason to get out of bed. And then they became this, this big thing. It kind of got away from me a little bit, which is wonderful. You know, on, on, on social media, people were, people went a little bit, yeah, they, they, they people just loved them. And, and that was great. And then it, it became this big conversation, I suppose, is what I'm trying to say. But yeah, I, I guess it became this big a conversation online rather than just me putting my feelings onto paper and, and screaming into the void. It became people saying, oh, gosh, I feel like this as well. What about this? Have you been feeling this? And, and then other people would, would start talking to each other. And I just found that so, so wonderful. So, yeah, I just kept going, I guess. <laughs> so... You've been reading comics for pretty much your whole life at this point. Do you find that you prefer paper or digital as somebody who reads and consumes comics? Um, gosh, it, de it depends. I do love owning the paper comic of, of something. I don't know. This last year, though, th there has been a lot of online comics that have kept me going. And I, d I like the oh gosh what's she called let me see if i can remember her name but i'll talk about someone else in the meantime uh lucy lucy nisley i always feel like i say her name wrong and i probably am lucy nisley's been making comics about her and homeschooling her little boy whom she she calls pal in her comics and i've really been enjoying those 
and they are, you know, they're very scribbly and, and I don't know if they're ever going to go in a book, but it, it, like, I'm okay with that. <laughs> like, it's all right if they're just for, for the internet and they're just, you know, scribbly little things to put out there straight away. The same with a lot of Kate Beaton's um, also bio comics right now. And also uh, Kate Leth's comics I've really been enjoying online. And I think at least the two Kates you can get on Patreon. I'm not sure about Lucy, but yeah, I'm not sure if they're ever going to go in a book. And I think a few years ago, I would have had problems with that. I'd have been like, well, they're not, I, I want them in a book. I want them on my bookshelf. But right now I'm a bit like, well, no, actually, if they just exist online, that's that's okay because that's that's the the space that they're meant to exist in right now. Watch them totally prove me wrong and and bring books out on both of these now. But <laughs> like, um, I don't know if I'm getting my point across very well. But th there are some comics that are absolutely fine to exist on just online, and they bring people so much joy. And and uh, you, you, they're kind of more. You, you read like four panels. It's not like a whole a whole page you, you have to savor. It's just a, a little joke and it'll just give you that smile to get on with your day and it's really nice. And that's what those, those people are doing for me right now. I, yeah, I won't be annoyed if they never become books. You've worked now in, uh, in both digital and, and print as mediums. Is the process any different for creating digital versus print? Are they the same product? How does that work? I mean, it's very simple for me because unless I'm doing storyboard work, I always draw by hand. So I've always got a very high res scan of what I've drawn. And then if I color it, I'll, I'll save that as high res. So like I, I could you know, print out most of what I've I've done in a, a physical book as well as putting it online. Just because online, you know, you, you you don't need to be very, very high res. It can be a, not a very good JPEG. But yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I think, I and I will always work like that just because I'm so enamored with, with drawing by hand. So that's not really something I need to worry about, I guess, unless I suddenly become very, very dependent on my Cintiq and decide to bring my storyboarding work over to comics and be like, actually, I can do this much faster uh, like this. But I, I do like drawing by hand. I like the I like the physicality of it. I like I'm quite a tactile person <laughs> as well. You know, I like to feel the paper. I like to feel how hard I'm pressing on the pen and stuff. So yeah, for me right now, it, it, I, I could I could swing both ways <laughs> for from print to, to web. I can I can do both, but yeah, it depends. If I want to really speed up my process, I guess I could go fully digitally. But right now, my my heart is is with uh, paper and pen. <laughs> do you feel like digital comics and, and paper comics are are read differently? Oh, I'm not sure there's that much difference i think your eye will move the same way it would on a on a page whether it's on a screen or or in your hands there are things you can do with both mediums that you can't do with the other one and the one i always think of is you know emily carroll she did a comic called face all red or his face all red no i think it was just called face all red and it was a horror comic and you had to go down a well to find out the, the, the end of the comic. And I don't think I'm spoiling anything by saying that, by the way, I hope I'm not anyway, but in the, the, the print version, the well was on the page and you could see the bottom of the, of the page and that was cool. It was still very scary, <laughs> like very scary, but on the online one, you had to scroll down the well and it was so scary because you didn't, you didn't want to get to the end and it was very, very frightening. So you can do things like that when it's online, but you have to really break the, the format. Like you can't just have, like, you know, you couldn't do that on um, Comixology or, or Comixy or whatever you read online comics on. You have to really, you'd have to build a website to do that, to scroll down a page that was like very, very long, I think. But, the, you know, the, you can do things like that with online comics. And I find that very exciting. 
but the, the same way you know having a comic in your hands isn't quite the same and and being able to uh kind of i don't feel like i i can ever really like you can't turn it round and look at it a different way and look at it upside down and just not that the comics are really asking you to do that that i can think of but i quite like doing that and just seeing like oh how does this look you know if i hold it this way or, or you know if there's a, a panel that particularly fascinates me i quite like to just look at it different ways and 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 see how it works and and just imagine how someone drew it and I, I don't feel like I can really do that with a, an online comic. So I think, I think there, are, there are pros and cons with, with both things, as there are with the most, most decisions in life. But yeah, bo both of them really fascinate me as, as things. And, and yeah, I'm, I'm, like I say, I've really come around to comics that are just going to exist online this year as well. So... Yeah, it's it's very exciting time, I feel, for comics. In, it really in all, is. all mediums. Um, <clears throat> my friend, uh, Miracle Man, he, he, he's always uh, talking about how uh, what we're seeing right now is a, uh, a comic book renaissance, especially, especially around, like, indie books. And mm. uh, I think he's right about that. It's, it's just a great time to be a comics writer. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess independent comic artists and writers, they've just kept working throughout this this pandemic. And, you know, we've we've just and I'm, I've been, I've felt very, very lucky that I could just keep working. You know, a lot of people couldn't. Um, and 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 that's, you know, been, been really terrible. But for me, I, I, I work from home anyway, so I've just been able to, to keep going. And, and there's been some really amazing independent comics that have come out of this. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been an interesting time <laughs> for indies. Yeah, and uh, uh, yeah, a lot of the big companies have had to close. But yeah, it was, it was small fry. <laughs> we've, we've kept going. So yeah, it's been interesting. What's your favorite comic or uh, or comic series of all time? Love and Rockets, I would have to say, is my favorite. Good call. <laughs> Thanks. And like, I'm I'm sure this is a lot of people's answer, so I won't wax lyrical too much about it. But just coming going back to how my stuff is very character driven, I think it is because of Love and Rockets, and it's just. I couldn't, when I, first, I read the first um, trade of, of Love, Love and Rockets and I just couldn't get Maggie out of my head. She was just, she and she still lives there rent-free in my head and, and I'm very glad of it because <laughs> I think she she makes me a better writer. Yeah, just the, the characters in there are just, it's like they're going to walk out of the panel at any point. They're so real, they're so real. Like they're gonna walk out of the panel and start talking to you. It's amazing. Um, Jaime Hernandez. Sorry, I should have said that the the writer and the artist is just he's a genius. <laughs> so yeah, that would be my 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 favorite comic series. That's awesome. Are you ready for the uh, the fun questions? Yes, always. Okay, so what's your favorite food? My favorite food. <laughs> I want to say something really interesting, but it's pizza. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That's a really boring answer. That, that's not boring. That's that's great. Okay. It's pizza. <laughs> so, there are so many possibilities with pizza. It can be anything. That's true. I like a lot of meat and very hot, very like hot, spicy, spicy meat pizza. It's my fave. I love it. <laughs> I have not eaten lunch yet, and that sounds amazing. I'm so sorry, making you so hungry. And I like a, <laughs> no, a nice okay. garlic, <laughs> maybe a garlic mayo dip to dip the crusts in. Oh, wow. there you go. That would be, that would be just heaven. <laughs> What's the best swear word? Fuck. Awesome. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> no, that's a good one. That's a good one. It's it can be yeah, it can be a, 
a lot of things. It could be an adjective, it can be a, a doing word, it can be a verb, yeah. <laughs> so it can be a lot of things. <laughs> okay, so you wake up one morning and you are imbued with superpowers. What are they? Okay. What do you do with them? Oh gosh. I've since I was a kid, I've always wanted to fly. So I guess that that would be nice. I know it's again it's quite a boring answer being able to fly. But that yeah. And I guess I'd just travel the world with them. <laughs> that would be nice. See different places. That'd be very nice, especially after the year we've had. See somewhere that isn't <laughs> Manchester. <laughs> It sounds amazing. Just getting out and, you know, getting the mm. fresh air and, you know, yeah. just, just seeing the countryside <laughs> and all that fun stuff. Yes. Seeing the sea, so, trying to look at the ocean. That'd be nice. Oh, Find yeah, the... that would be great. Ah, that'd be nice. I live in the Midwest. We're totally landlocked. So I would love oh, no. to see the ocean again. It would be great. <laughs> oh, so um, do you see yourself using your, your new powers in a heroic way? Um, are you a hero or an anti-hero or maybe someone who isn't especially heroic? How do you, how do you see yourself? Um, hmm. Oh, gosh. I, I mean, at the, at the start, I'd probably try and keep them to myself because I'd be like, I just want to go and see the sea. I don't want to have to work for the police or anything. Maybe I'd just, maybe I'd, if I saw someone that could, if their lives could be made better by me, I don't know, if someone was stuck up a tree or anything and I'd, I'd maybe help them. But it would just be on a case-by-case -case basis. <laughs> I sound really terrible. No, you so, sound yeah, great. If I saw Please. someone that needed help and they seemed like they needed they were okay then I then I them. these are fantastic answers I wouldn't second guess it <laughs> okay so a hundred years from now NASA throws your your entire life's worth of creative output into a space capsule sometime later aliens find it in deep space what do they think of it oh gosh They'd probably be like, wow, this girl was really obsessed with giant animals. <laughs> Just... <laughs> it's a barky and friendly. And also the rabbit from the rabbit is really big and scary. And yeah. Oh, the, yeah. No, they wouldn't think that. They'd be like, wow, this the place where this girl comes from was populated by giant animals. Because they wouldn't get that barky and friendly were my imaginary dogs. Yeah, they, they probably would be like, wow, there's all these horrible animals <laughs> in this planet. I'd hope also maybe maybe they'd be like, hey, these comics are really good, though. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I like to hope that, you know, aliens in outer space would have cultures advanced enough to create pretty good comics so that they know one when they uh, see it. I hope so. <laughs> Well, Rachel, this has been an absolute pleasure. Thank it's you for so coming fun. on my on my humble little podcast. I, I really appreciate it. Um, oh, where can, thank you for having where, me. Oh, yeah, no problem. Um, where can <laughs> people find you online? They can find me at rachelsmith.org is my website. If they go to iconbooks.com, they can find Quarantine Comics on there, and that has a bunch of links to pre-order the new book um i'm on twitter at at rachel spell r-a-c-h-a-e-l underscore and yeah those are the important ones i think <laughs> and now babies it's time to close the show i wanted to say thank you for listening supporting us and following us online our listeners are the best people ever and we love that. Thank you. Intimate Characters is a show about the people who create the things we love. It's hosted and produced by the adorable The Web. That's me. Illustrations need animation prerequisites 
by Lex Ziva, who is awesome. We love her. Opening theme by Antonia Marquis. Closing theme by Mikey Flash of Speed Force Music. Sound services by Brogan Malloy. Well, that's it, my lovelies. That's all we got. Join us next time for another exciting adventure in cyberspace. Love ya.